it really snuck up on me this time. We have talked about burnout with writing on this channel before. In fact, I remember making a video on this and I don't really remember everything I said, but I'm gonna link it up here anyway. Uh, it's, you know, it's something we all struggle with. And I only just realized yesterday, how far are we into May, <laughs> that this is Mental Health Awareness Month. And I'm gonna get a little bit more into that later. But I thought, you know what? I have been gone for, what, three weeks <laughs> from this channel. And this seems to be the most, the best video I could make to come back um, and rejoin you guys because I've missed you. Hi, hello, how's it going? <laughs> Thank you for bearing with me. I'm sorry I just kind of vanished like that. I put up a community post about three weeks ago um, and basically said, I'm burned out, but specifically not on writing, but on talking about writing. And I believe one of the things I said in, in this is, it's totally my fault, which I mean, that's not not true, but also I'm trying to get out of the uh, habit of, I don't know, I don't think much good can come from if you are struggling with burnout of just beating yourself down and blaming yourself for putting yourself in that situation. Like, no. So I kind of regret putting that in that post and I'm trying to change the way my mind is working around it. But anyway, we're gonna get into exactly what I mean by that and what, what I was going through at the time. Uh, but since this is my first video in a while, I wanted to like do all the other updates and if you're not interested in that and you just want to chat about burnout, please see the timestamps below so you can skip ahead of all the stuff that you don't want to hear about. The first thing being dogs. Although, if you don't want to hear about dogs, like, what are you even doing here? Um, <laughs> so let's talk about Buddy. Uh, for those of you who maybe this is the first video of mine you're watching, Buddy was my foster dog and I had him for exactly one month. And the last update I gave you guys was he, he is the sweetest lab. I mean, just the most loving dog ever. Rosa was completely obsessed with him. They were absolute best friends. Everything was great except he has the most severe storm anxiety I have ever heard of. And thunderstorms in Texas, y'all, is not a joke. So this is actually why his previous owners uh, who had adopted him and had him for a year, they couldn't handle it anymore. And um, no judgment to them about that, especially now that I've seen the issue because this was a couple who were getting older. The woman in particular, she was just a very small, petite woman. And this is a 90 pound dog. And in the middle of a night during a thunderstorm, he was so scared that he jumped up on the bed on top of her and she couldn't breathe and she couldn't push him off. That's scary. Scary for both of them, I'm sure. Scary for all three of them. <laughs> um, and they had just been through multiple episodes like that and, you know, were devastated at giving, having to find another home for him, but you gotta do what's right for everyone. And um, so we were happy to take Buddy and I vlogged about our first storm experience. It was a lot. We did get his vet to prescribe Trazodone, which was a sedative that helped somewhat but we were getting complaints from like the building manager was calling and saying that our downstairs neighbors were complaining about the noise um and that would be like his pacing and kind of just like jumping and trying to get out i, I couldn't i tried putting him in the crate he busted out of that crate like the hulk it was it was just there wasn't much we can do so the last week we had him was actually like just thunderstorm from hell week and it, most of them were happening during the night i spent a significant amount of time in my bathroom with him because that was like the furthest we could get away from the windows and the sound um just trying to like keep him as calm and quiet as possible uh, i did not get a lot of sleep that week neither did josh it was not great and um just the best possible thing that could have happened happened which was that the rescue center we were working with had um someone they found someone else who wanted to foster him and so i took buddy this was like one month to the day that from when we had gone to pick him up 
Um, I took him to this guy's house. He lived about a half an hour away. He had a beautiful house, beautiful backyard with a pool. And he was just this really nice guy. We talked a lot. We, I hung out there for a while. We wanted to make sure Buddy was going to get along with the other three dogs that this guy had already adopted. And, um, and they did. And we talked a lot. He just like, he's the type of person who just, he has a soft spot for the older dogs. He doesn't go for puppies. He, you know, he, and, um, and he, all of his dogs have some kind of anxiety issue. So he's very used to managing that. Um, they were all a little bit older. I think one of them was more like four or five, but the other two were seniors. And, uh, and he is the, he, what he was basically saying to me when I was, when I dropped Buddy off is he, he fosters kind of with the intention to fail. Like he fosters when he's interested in, ad in adopting a dog, but he wants to make sure it's a good fit. And, um, and so that was really exciting and it was just great. I, I was so happy that Buddy was in a place where, first of all, I think he's just gonna be more comfortable in a house and he loved the pool, of course. Um, and just to be with an owner who was used to this, was used to it. Like one of his dogs had storm anxiety. One of them had separation anxiety. They all had a thing and he was, he just knows how to like kind of strategize and plan for it. And so when I last left, <laughs> Buddy was swimming circles in the spa outside the little jacuzzi thing next to the pool while his new foster sisters looked at him like, what are you doing? And, um, and yeah, it was great. I mean, I was really sad obviously, but also just so happy that he found like this was going to be the better deal for him. So this new, this guy and I have been texting every couple of days. He'll give me an update because I asked him to. And he'll ask me, you know, text to ask me questions about Buddy and certain things. And the last time he texted me was actually, I think it was yesterday. And he said, um, they're still working on the storm thing. We had another one come in last week. It was pretty rough. But um, he's leaning towards adopting him because he really, I mean, he's the perfect dog aside from the storm stuff, but also he's just like, I think he really just needs some stability. And I was like, yes, that is exactly what he needs. So fingers crossed, I think we might've found his forever home. And I think it is absolutely the most perfect place for him to be. And that is the end of the, the buddy story for now. Uh, Rosa is not happy with me. She loved having him around. So I do feel bad about that. But otherwise I think this is like as good as that could have turned out. So anyway, that week with all of the thunderstorms, um, that was the last week of Camp Nano. <laughs> and I am not gonna lie to you guys, I forgot it was happening. I just forgot. I forgot it was April. I forgot it. I was so strung out and tired from the lack of sleep and just like barely keeping up with my contractually obligated work <laughs> that I didn't, it came and went like, May 1st and I was like, oh, I think it was like several days into May when I thought, uh, well, Camp Nano's over. Oh, well, <laughs> and I don't really care to be totally honest with you. I'm not sure my heart was really in that or committed to that to begin with. Uh, I did not hit my goal of 20,000 words. I wrote 18,000 words on my book in April and I'm not going to call that, you know, failing. I think that's a win. I wrote 18,000 words. I'm happy with that. Uh, so yeah, I am currently, and uh, I will just update a little bit about this book now. Um, this is my mystery novel. Right now, I've worked on it some since then, like some in May. I'm currently, I think around 23, maybe 24,000 words. And I'm gonna do a little bit of a longer update on this later uh, in this video. But what I did to get my head back in it after I didn't work on it for like a week is I just, I think I've told you guys I do this before. I compiled the document from Scrivener into a Word document, got it formatted nicely, and then sent it to my Kindle and then read it on the Kindle app on my iPad because it looks like a real book then and that just makes me feel good. I don't know, it's kind of dorky, but that's what I like to do. And I read it, I read all, you know, 18,000 words that I had from th all the way through and I loved every single chapter i'm not kidding i just it got me super excited again and then it was easy to get back into it and just start adding a little bit more every day um i just i really love this book i'm having a lot of fun on that let's put a pin in that thought and we're gonna come back to it later so the next thing that happened is last week i took an actual vacation <laughs> something that i 
really realized when I was going through this burnout thing is that I, as a freelancer, I overlap work or I try to make my schedule so that I'm never dealing with too many clients at once. As we know from January, February, March, both of this year and of 2021, sometimes I fail at that spectacularly and I just way overbook myself. It is what it is. But what I never do is actually schedule a week or two here, like peppered throughout the year where I have an actual break. And if you think about this with most jobs you have where you are not your own boss, you know, where you work for a company or at an organization, you get some vacation time, usually not enough, <laughs> but you get some, you get, you know, like when I was a teacher, I had a couple weeks off in the summer where I didn't have band camp and I didn't have drum camp and all that other stuff. It was usually sometime at the end of June, early July, where I had two or three weeks of nothing. Uh, spring break, same, when you're a teacher, nothing. Okay, you know, most jobs have that. I don't build that in for myself as a freelancer. I just constantly, when I'm looking ahead, I'm at the point now, especially with ghostwriting, where I, when I look at my calendar, I'm looking ahead at like the next nine months. And when I schedule someone, when I say I can start here, I'm just overlapping it with the end of other clients' projects because, and I know this is ridiculous, but I want to be able to start this new client's project as soon as possible because I feel like I'm inconveniencing them by starting it a little later. So I'll have like two clients and let's say they, they finish at the end of August. Instead of getting a new client and saying, oh, let me start the second week of September so I can like have a week of nothing. I'm like, oh, I can start you mid-August. <laughs> so I, I do this overlap thing and I, I, I do it because I'm imagining that it's more convenient for other people who have no idea what my client's schedule looks like and are probably, if they're fine with starting, you know, in early September or mid-August or late August, they're probably fine with early September. Like, why, why, why do I do this? I don't know. And right now, I do have ghostwriting stuff scheduled pretty much till the end of this year. So this is something, this is like a long-term goal of mine. Let's call this an early, we're setting a very early 2023 goal right now. And that is to build in a few breaks, like a spring break of like a week, a summer break and a fall break. I, th I, I this is like completely within my power as a freelancer to do. Why haven't I been doing it? I don't know. Um, no, I do know because I'm always afraid the work is going to dry up and I'm going to go broke. That's why. That, that's like the eternal freelancer struggle, but it's not. And I need to have faith in that and I need to realize that if I don't schedule these vacations and give myself a break, I'm not going to be bringing my best self and my best work to my clients. So in the end, this benefits everyone. <laughs> so anyway, I did have a real break actually, um, last weekend for three days, uh, because my friends, Allison and Lindsay, who I've talked about on this channel before, they're my co-authors on the pros of cons. Uh, last weekend was Lindsay's birthday and they both live in New York. And Lindsay was like, you know, I want to take a trip for my birthday. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And she was like, what if I take a trip to Dallas? And Allison comes too. And I was like, mm, I think we can do that. Uh, this was a few months ago. So we booked an Airbnb, like this really awesome lake house. And they flew in and I drove us. I got to take Rosa, which was really fun. And I did not open my laptop, I don't think, except to like put a show to watch on at night before I fall asleep. <laughs> I, it was great. It, we just sat around and talked and caught up and you know, I cooked a lot and it was Lindsay's birthday. We also went to a wine tasting at a Longhorn Ranch owned by three generations of women and that was a delight. It was really good wine. Like I was kind of curious and Lindsay who knows wine better than I do was like, I wonder what Texas wine is like. And I was a little bit nervous. It was going to be a letdown, not a letdown, really good wine. It was really unique. So we did a tasting there and it was just a really great break and I really needed it. And I got back uh, last week and really I, I thought to myself, okay, now I'm ready to get back into it. I'm gonna just jump back into my work and my book and YouTube. 
but that didn't happen. The trip was great, but it didn't fix my burnout. Shockingly, I know. And I, I just, all week I was like, I wanna, oh, there's Rosa. I wanna make a video. I want to have a video up. I don't wanna turn on this camera and talk about writing. Why am I having this resistance to talking about writing and publishing? I think some of this has to do with like, what happened back in April where I just was like, okay, I'm done for now, I need to just stop, is I overbooked myself, shocker, I know, this time not with ghostwriting, this time with teaching. Um, and when I say teaching, I mean both teaching courses, but also book coaching, because that's basically the same thing. When I, what, what book coaching is to me is, it's one-on-one -on -one workshopping with a client on their specific book. And I did that, plus I taught a course that I had talked to you guys about, um, and I just had this one particular week where I was just on Zoom, it felt like constantly <laughs> talking to people and helping them with their books. And I want to be really clear about this. That's actually like my favorite job. Loki, I like it more than I like ghostwriting. <laughs> okay, it's in the moment. I it's just the most fun thing. I love I love helping people develop their ideas and I love their excitement and passion for their books and there's nothing better than when we have those light bulb breakthrough moments where they figure out something and they leave the call so excited to work on the next part of their book. It's just, it's the best. So I'm not complaining about this job at all. It was just, I had so much of it in such a small period of time. And every time I get off one of those calls, my brain is like, it just crashes. I, I, it's like, it's really, it's just kind of, it's mentally tiring in a good way. But when you do it over and over again, or like for me, I guess I have a, I have a maximum amount that I can handle and I crossed that threshold for the first time. And, and uh, yeah, so I just, I didn't want to turn on the camera and I came back from this trip last week and still not wanting to turn on the camera and talk about writing and publishing. And I, I started kind of thinking about that and really questioning, okay, what is it? I mean, do like even just updating everybody about where things stand with my book? how Camp Nano went, you know, what I'm planning next. I, I don't, I don't know. And then I have, you know, my more scripted planned videos. And we're back. I have my more scripted planned videos. I actually have two that um, I'm, I'm genuinely excited about, but I can't bring myself to open the documents and pick up the scripts. One of them, I have decided that the how to write a multi POV novel course that I taught last month, I had been playing around with what I want to do with that course material. And honestly, I think I want to just turn it into a massive workshop video and put it up here on YouTube. I don't want to put it up somewhere else and charge for it. I just want to like put it out there. Um, but it is going to, I learned a lot from actually teaching that course and working with authors and there are some changes I want to make to it. So I, I need to like heavily edit that kind of script or lecture or talk or whatever you want to call it. Uh, and I, I haven't wanted to go back into it because guess what? That's talking about writing. And my other one, the video I've been talking to you guys about making for so long and I have half a script is the scammy writing courses. But guess what? That's also <laughs> talking about writing. That's talking about talking about writing and I don't want to do it. Why do I not want to do this? Why? What, where is this like coming from? And I, I journal. I, I think I've talked to you guys about this before. I journal every morning and every night. It's like a, a big brain dump to start the day and to end the day. And I love it. And I think I touched on some stuff when I journaled Wednesday night. And then last night, which was Thursday night, wait, what day is today? Today's Friday. Thursday night, I, I, you know, was getting ready for bed and I opened YouTube as one does before I was gonna go to sleep and I saw a couple of new AuthorTube videos, um, one by Morgan Lee and one by Barrett Laurie and I watched them both and I'm going to link both of them down below because I really, I am talking about burnout and I mentioned that this is Mental Health Awareness Month, but I think it is really important to point out that I feel anxiety and I feel depressed sometimes. 
as does every human <laughs> um, and and that's normal and good and we should feel these things sometimes we are not supposed to be happy all the times it is okay to feel those emotions however that is not the same as having clinical depression and clinical clinical anxiety and anything that falls within that realm that is a different thing and burnout when you already have these issues is again just a completely different beast and barrett and morgan both speak so well to that experience in a way i can't because i don't have that experience and so i want to share those videos below please check them out i'm not joking when i say i was like taking notes when they were talking because they both just like threw out some real gems so what morgan said that one of the things that i wrote down was don't lose your passion for words because they are healing spend more time writing from your heart and that really immediately made me go back and read my journal entry from wednesday night because she was speaking to something that i i had kind of uncovered about myself i am there is resentment still at the core of the issue i'm having resentment for the same crap that i have talked to you guys about for the last year ever since last summer when i found out my agent was retiring and i just kind of realized the a, a an arc of my career was coming to a close and i don't know what the next arc is going to look like um i'm still working through that turns out what a surprise and uh barrett talked about how dealing with depression and anxiety when you're in an industry and a community that values productivity above all else is a lot and he mentioned this specifically word counts because we're all about word counts and i do this too and i understand why it's it's one of the few tangible things we can share you know with everybody else we all know what it means if we say i wrote 3000 words today that's that's a thing we can all understand as writers but it does put in a sort of implicit pressure on our viewers or us as viewers of other author viewers like if you wrote a certain amount today and you feel good about it but then you see that this author tuber is like i wrote this much today it's really hard not to compare yourself and be like uh I could have done better no it it's <laughs> that's that's not how it works and and this drives me this is just upsetting to me because i never want to make anybody feel bad talking about word counts but i also think it's okay to talk about word counts and i think i covered this in a video in the past i'm having some serious deja vu right now uh i'll try to link that video up here too if i think of what it was but um we're, one thing that really gets to me about when people get down on talking about word counts or going for big word counts is they kind of boil it down to this idea of well i go for quality not quantity and to me it's like the quality of your words and the quantity of words you write in a day have literally nothing to do with each other <laughs> okay i the implication is that if you write slower you're writing better some people are some people are not I can tell you I have spent hours writing 500 excruciating words that needed some significant editing later. I have a friend who will sit down regularly and in a couple of hours knock out four to five thousand words and her prose is like so good and I have so much envy that she's able to do that. Quality and quantity have nothing to do to get with each other and I know I've said this before but it is important to talk about word counts because in the at the end of the day a book is made up of a quantifiable number of words you're going to get to the end at some point and whether you write your draft in bursts of like 200 words a day or 2000 words a day or if you just write the whole you know 50,000 word book in like 2 weeks that really has nothing to do with the quality of the way in which you arrange those words to tell a story at the end of the day it might be really high quality it might not be it might need a lot of revising but that has nothing to do with how fast or slow you wrote it so i'm just trying to think of like how i because everybody to each their own everybody do what they want to do how i can address this in the future in videos um because i'm sure i will make videos again one day where i'm like i wrote x number of words today but I'm going to make an effort to follow that up with 
And here's how I feel about the quality of it. Um, I, I know I've talked about before with like dictation, it needs so much editing after. I get big word counts with dictation, but oh my god, it needs a lot of editing. And, and just like, I want to balance that out and really show that for me, the number of words I get doesn't, doesn't always relate directly or really never directly relates to the quality. I have had writing sessions. I wrote yesterday, I'll do it right now. Yesterday I wrote 3000 words on the, on a client's book and I was extremely pleased with the quality of that. Does that mean every time I have a 3000 word writing session, I'm pleased with the quality? Oh my God, no, <laughs> not at all. It, it changes day to day. So I want to start addressing that a little bit more so that anyone watching who hears the word count doesn't necessarily, f I don't want it to make you feel bad about how much you did or did not write today because all that matters is that you're moving towards your goal of finishing a draft and again, that draft is going to get done. The number of words you write per day just determines whether you're going to finish it here or here or here, but it's going to get done. And, uh, and, and spend a little more time thinking about the quality of what we did and why we feel good or not good about the quality of our words today. I don't know. So that, that was something Barrett talked a lot about and he's right. It's, I mean, I, I think most industries are probably going to put a pretty high value on productivity, but um, in, in writing and publishing specifically, yeah, we put a lot of, we put a lot of emphasis on it. And here's the crazy thing. And now I'm specifically speaking to traditional publishing. Um, it doesn't matter if you can write fast. Publishing is so effing slow. Why are we trying to like pommel out words upon words upon words? When you self publish, you might try a rapid release thing. And in that case, yeah, it is actually very valuable for you and your career if you can really like turn out draft after draft and get them up and published and selling. We don't have that kind of control in traditional publishing and the industry is slower right now than it has ever been. What's the rush? Why are we feeling bad about it? And that brings me to what I wrote in my journal on Wednesday night. So I use day one, which is a journal writing app. And one of the features it has is that you can choose a template to, you know, that just gives you prompts. And I use those, you know, like, ha um, like, I don't know, probably about 50% of the time that I journal, I use a prompt because I don't know, I just like answering the questions. And one of the ones, one of the templates I use regularly is an evening journaler journaling template. And it, one of the prompts is what am I proud of today? And I think I really like answering that question because, and this is, this is way beyond writing. This is just true of everything. As humans, I think we are really, really good, especially at night before we go to bed and we're turning over all the things that went wrong today and all the ways we failed. We're really good at listing all the ways we failed today, all the things we could have done better and all the things that are just crap in our lives right now. And those things are valid. I'm not, and, and there is, I think, value in asking yourself, what could I have done better today? That's, that's a good prompt too. But something that I have been trying to do more often, and I suggest you do it too, is to list a few things in your head or in your journal at the end of every day that you did right, that you are proud of. List some things that are going well in your life. Doesn't matter how mundane they seem, they are still things that are good because we just tend to always focus on the bad and particularly with the negative self-talk, all the ways we messed up today, those moments that we relive over and over in our brains, like we can somehow go back and change time and like fix them and say the right thing or do, you know, the better thing or not do the thing we did that we're calling stupid or lazy or whatever now, like, eh. We, we have enough of that. Let's balance it out and list some things that we're proud of today. So Wednesday night, this was, um, th I'm going to read this first. I apologize because I'm reading it straight from my journal. It's a little bit stream of consciousness, but hopefully it will make sense. And then I will explain a little bit more about it after. Figuring out that breaking everything down into tasks wasn't working for me mentally anymore, at least for right now. I enjoy this book. Querying is going to be long and potentially devastating. I am not in a rush. I am going to enjoy writing this book and not bow to publishing's rules or time frame. I have spent the last decade 
doing everything I can to accommodate this industry's rules, no matter how inconvenient they are to me. I've turned copy edits around in 24 hours. I've tackled huge revisions in a few weeks after getting late edit letters. I've whipped out proposals for a hard deadline only to get ghosted on a response. And you know what all of that does? Makes me dislike writing. And that's what I resent more than anything. So f that. I might never get an agent. I might never sell this book. I can play by all the rules and nothing will ever come of it, but the one thing the industry cannot take from me, because I won't let it, is my love of writing fiction. I got a little heated writing that and I really wasn't expecting it. What I, what I started out saying in that entry is that the thing I was proud of on Wednesday is that I sat down, I opened my calendar, I use Asana, I've talked about this before, I've shared with you guys that when I have a project, whether it's a ghostwriting project or my own book, anything, a course, whatever. I put the deadline on the calendar and then I break it down into a ton of subtasks and then I assign all of those subtasks to days and I try to give myself wiggle room so I can slide them around and you know if I wake up one day and I'm not feeling drafting this, I'm feeling working on this course, then I can slide them around and it's fine. I did that with my own book and and I do that with YouTube and I was trying to put, okay, film, edit, upload a YouTube video about X, you know, because I wanted to get back into it after this trip. Um, I spent Monday doing that. And every time I opened that calendar, I just felt that resistance. Like I am not turning the camera on. I am not opening up those scripts. No, 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 no. Um, and, and the same with my book. I, I worked on my book Monday and Tuesday and every time I did, it was so fun but I had my little project tracker in Scrivener open and I was checking my word counts and like, oh, I haven't written enough. I need to get to X number of words today. And that part was making me feel bad. The actual writing of the words and the scene was really fun. So what I did on Wednesday was I decided to delete everything from my calendar that is not contracted work. Ghostwriting stuff, book coach stuff. That is what is on my calendar. My book and YouTube are not on my calendar anymore. Not because I'm not gonna work on them, but because I am not going to, I don't know, I'm in a place where I don't, where scheduling them in and seeing the obligation every day is what is, is exacerbating that feeling of resentment and no, I'm not, I'm, I'm, don't make me. You can't make me, I'm not going to. And so I deleted all of them and then Wednesday afternoon, once I did that and I looked at my calendar and looked at the rest of the week with just client work and it was like a literal sigh of relief. And I just felt a lot lighter. And then Thursday morning when I woke up, I opened my calendar. I saw the one client thing I had to do yesterday, which was write 3000 words on this draft and my headspace before during and after I worked on that book, it was like the most calm, relaxing and focused work session I have had in recent memory. It, it just, it made such a huge difference. And that was what I had intended to journal about. That was what I was saying I was proud of. I figured that out. And later on that day, I, I had this deal with myself. I'm gonna open Scrivener every day and at least write one sentence on my book. And I opened Scrivener and I wrote, I don't know how many words because I'm not looking at the tracker, but it was more than one sentence. I added a nice chunk to a scene. I enjoyed it. I was not aiming for a specific word count. I just stopped when I felt like stopping and I closed it and that's what it is. And I'm gonna do the same thing today. Um, but yeah, what happened when I was journaling is all of that apparently still lingering resentment towards publishing <laughs> came pouring out and now it makes a lot more sense to me why I have been so reluctant to talk to people about writing and publishing because I'm still feeling these feelings of resentment but I want to be very encouraging whether it's to you guys who watch these videos or to my book coach clients to people who attend my workshops I don't want to bring them down and the thing is when I tell them yes your book is great yes you have a chance in publishing I mean it I mean it like I just my my own personal feelings towards traditional publishing um, are not there, there's still some good there's some good out there there are people getting agents and book deals every day no matter how many other things seem to be going wrong in this industry right now 
and and I want to be encouraging and I also don't want to be fake <laughs> and I was afraid I think that if I turned this camera on and started talking about it um, it would just lead to a gripe fest and you would turn off this video being like well no point writing my book no point trying to find an agent no point trying to go on submission and I don't want anyone to feel that way because I genuinely don't think you should you do have a chance we all have a chance okay um, yeah so I guess I guess that's what I'm trying to say is I, I want to be encouraging and supportive I also want to be honest and sometimes when you're feeling really resentful about things it's hard to find that balance but I am trying and yeah I have probably rambled on about this for long enough now so please first and foremost please watch Barrett and Morgan's videos again I'm gonna link them both in the description and in the comments of this video really just can't recommend enough please go watch them and uh, let me know it's been a while how are things going How's the writing going? How's the not writing going? Uh, how do you deal with burnout? All of those things, let's talk about in the comments below. I really missed you guys. I'm happy to be back. And I will say I'm probably going to be keeping a rather irregular schedule because I'm not putting this stuff on my calendar anymore, but I will be uploading videos again <laughs> soon. So I will see you hopefully sometime next week whenever i see you with another video thank you for watching have a great weekend